So I've already used the unused space in this panel and there really isn't any other space on the, the center console panel. The out, I've checked it out and the outside pieces here, it's not really a good location to mount anything because this plate connects in there. So I'm gonna mount my voltage gauges to the outside and I wanna align them with this top edge. So my first step is use a straight edge and mark a line. Then since that pencil mark is really hard to see, I'm gonna use a piece of tape. and put it along my line to help me lay out where I'm gonna cut cut my holes. From there, I know that the top edge of my gauge is down a quarter of an inch from the top of the, the mounting bezel. So I'm gonna come down a quarter of an inch and mark a line. And so I can see it, I'm gonna use a black pen. So it's fine. So it's a fine line and I can see it more easily. Uh, that's gonna be the top of my hole cut out. I'm gonna do that on both sides cause I'm gonna have two gauges. So I'm going to put a mark at about three eighths. That'll give me the distance here is about a sixteenth. So it'll be a little more than a quarter inch away from that edge. This uh, center console panel comes off pretty easy. You just get your fingers behind it. It just pushes in. It's got six places where it's being held on. So pull out in the center and when I take it off I usually disconnect this light this is a passenger airbag off light it's just a little two wire harness up here and just find a little tab pull it out that gives me a little bit more uh, room to play with my harnesses that go to my heated seats and then to the heater controls. You could unplug those to get it out completely out of the way or just move it off to the side. So I wanna be able to get to this area directly behind here to make sure I'm not hitting anything as I drill this hole and then make this cut out. And I've already had this apart several times. So I know there's nothing that's gonna interfere. The ashtrays way over here, so I have uh, a good inch from this inside edge to the ashtray so I have all this area that's free for me to use. For cutting into this plastic my tools of choice are simply a round wood file. It's got pretty coarse teeth that'll take uh, a lot of the time out of this this effort. I use a flat uh, metal file to true up the edges and uh, sometimes I use my uh, chainsaw chain file but um, that helps get into the corners a little better if I need to. So I just simply start with uh, a pilot hole so I know my my device is three quarters of an inch wide and um, three quarters of an inch wide and approximately uh, inch and a half inch and a half long so I have three quarters of an inch to play with there and all I want is to drill a pilot hole to start with and then 
I switched to a bigger drill bit so that my large file can get in there. That hole isn't quite big enough. It gives me plenty of hole to get started and then I can simply start working down my line edge with my flat file just a little bit to true it up straighten it out so there I'm getting uh, pretty close so it fits in there it doesn't have to be perfect because the bezel is gonna cover up some of it here so I'd rather have it fit tight than have it be uh, perfect but uh, that actually looks pretty good you can always fine tune it if it's if you know if it doesn't sit perfectly straight up and down then you could go back and fine tune it a little bit uh, later as you insert the either the switch or in this case a gauge all the way in i'm pretty happy with that so feels like it's fitting in there pretty snug so i'm gonna go ahead and try it Oh, it snapped in pretty nice. So you see my uh, 12 to 24 volt gauge has the 5 volt USB connections on either side of it, which is kind of nice. It's going to be a lot better than charging with this in the, uh, you know, cigarette lighter port. Plus it's going to tell me the voltage on... Uh, my two batteries so one on each side one hooked to each of the batteries okay so now I just got to do the other side I cut the hole on the driver's side the same way for the second gauge pretty happy with the way it fits vacuumed up this method is quite messy making a lot of uh, plastic shavings so I've cleaned up transmission tunnel and down in behind with a vacuum cleaner so let's try fitting that in it's pretty snug pretty good so just line up the tabs Push it in. All right, so I've finished the physical installation of my USB port voltage gauges, the one on either side of the, the console. And all I've got to do is finish my wiring. So I have uh, two relays that are energized from the overhead console has a blue black wire in it that powers the switch for the rear sliding glass window and that's the easiest place to find that it's also located in the kick panel where the fuse box is at on the right side kick panel here but that's hard to find and it's hard to solder to so uh, I just ran a wire through the column the right side column up there so that uh, these two voltage gauges will stay on for the 20 minutes that the radio and the, the 
windows, power windows stay on. Now, all I've got left is to run my two ground wires, the two ground wires and then the two power wires. I've already run the two wires to the batteries, the double batteries under the hood. So I'll explain more about the double batteries and this circuit when I talk about uh, the dual battery installation. All right, I wanna finish up by talking about the operation of my two voltage gauge USB ports. I'm gonna turn the key, activate them. So they're both powered through the two relays that I showed you earlier. I'll have to wire tie those up. Right now they're terminated uh, to the same battery underneath the dash, but once I put my isolator solenoid under the, da under the hood, then uh, each gauge will read a, a different battery when the solenoid separates the two batteries. So I can see the state of charge of each of the two batteries. So I'm gonna have a, a main battery on this side or my automotive battery, and then I'm gonna have an auxiliary battery reading on this side or what people would call a trailer or house on RVs sometimes they call it a house battery I just it's for me it's going to be an auxiliary battery a lot of off-roaders do that they have dual batteries this truck has uh, a plow that attaches to it in the winter time so it's nice to have the extra amperage for the two batteries all right so that wraps up the the install of my two gauges. I hope you learned something from the video. Talk to you next time.